my viewers welcome to today's lecture on the course CEC 309 construction technology today we're going to look at the course content of CEC 309 as designed by the National Board for Technical Education MBTE so let us start by looking at the cons the content of construction technology uh, we'll also look at site layout considerations that will be our first topic for, for, for the course so my name is engineer Bona Namde welcome to construction technology CEC 309 presented by my humble self we will start with a look at the course content then who are this course meant for this course is designed for higher national diploma students hnd1 of civil engineering technology in accordance to mbte curriculum so taking a look at the course content here we'll have the specific the general objective which is the first one we have here we have about three general objectives the first objective here is how to understand or understand how to organize a site under how to organize a site the student is expected to list the main items to be considered in the layout of a new construction site the second item here is to outline the principal factor which affects layout of materials storage facilities and workshop on site the third specific learning outcome is that the students should be able to explain the basis of the client engineer contractor relationship in civil engineering contracts the student is also expected to itemize the principal duties of a resident engineer the student is expected to outline a recommended procedure for lifting heavy or bulk objects on the site to eliminate to minimize the risk of injury the student is also expected to outline safety procedures on construction sites. For the second general objective, the student is expected to understand the techniques, procedures, and the plans involved in large earth, large scale earth movements. On that specific learning outcome, the student is expected to one list factors which influence the choice of earth moving equipment. Two, explain the operation of the following types of earth moving plants. The first one is the back actor or back acting excavator. The second one is the drag line. The third one is the scraper. The fourth one is the grader. The fifth one is the bulldozer. The student is also expected to explain procedures for site control of earthworks, both in situ moisture and density tests, ETC. The student is expected to explain the use of topsoil on site, define burrow pits, explain the use of imported backfill materials on site outline the correct compaction procedure apply studies to estimate the plant required for a model at work under the third general objective The student is expected to understand the principles and construction of formwork, trusses, 
and flood. Based on this general objective, the student is expected to describe by means of sketches how form work is supported for a reinforced concrete column, a large reinforced concrete wall, a suspended beam, and excavation in soft soil. The student is expected to summarize the requirements of form work Describe briefly the following types of form work timber, steel, plastic, pneumatic, and tubing form work. The student is also expected to write briefly on or uh, write a brief note on the following release agents, exposed aggregates knock off finish finish striking of form work and is also expected to sketch a typical steel roofing truss with welded connection illustrating methods of fixing the roof truss to a universal column stanchion explain the principle of triangulation in relation to roof trusses explain with the aid of sketches a typical timber roof truss of short to medium span indicating methods of securing the members together. Sketch details of forming openings and ducts in the following types of suspended floor. 1. Timber. 2. Solid reinforced, reinforced concrete. 3. Recast concrete. Four, hollow port in situ reinforced concrete. The student is expected to also sketch details of forming opening and ducts in the following type of suspended floors. The first one is the timber suspended floor. The second one is solid reinforced concrete. The third one is precast concrete. The fourth one is hollow port in situ reinforced concrete and the fifth one and the next objective is to organize and visit sites so based on assessment this course consists of 20% coursework 20% course test 20% practical and 40% examination Based on competency, on completing the course, the student should be able to supervise basic civil engineering works. Let us start with site layout consideration, which is, is lecture one. And our general objective under this lecture is to understand how to organize a site. So to start with properly, general considerations here we say before any specific considerations and decisions can be made regarding site layout a general appreciation should be obtained by conducting a thorough site investigation at the pretender stage and examining in detail the drawings specification and bill of engineering measurements and evaluation BME, to formulate proposals of how the contract will be carried out if the tender is successful so under general consideration before taking any decision regard, regarding site layout we need to have a, an appreciation of the site by visiting the site and carrying out investigation before the tender stage and also while doing this we need to take a look at the drawings the specification also known as the BME to be able to know how to formulate proposals that is if the contract pulls through the under access consideration which is the second one this must be considered for both on and off site access routes to and from the site must be checked to as to the suitability for transporting all the requirements for the proposed work access on the site for deliveries and 
general circulation must also be carefully considered. So based on access consideration, we need to consider proper access for bringing in materials or transporting materials out of the site and also be able to provide enough access for movement on the site. So this must be checked. The third one is storage considerations. Under storage considerations, amount and type of material to be stored, security and weather protection requirements, allocation of adequate areas for storing materials, and allocating adequate working space around storage areas. Siting of storage areas to reduce double handling to a minimum without impeding the general site circulation and or works in progress. So based on uh, storage considerations, we are looking at the amount and type of material to be stored. We are looking at considering materials that are uh, subject to or that are susceptible to weather conditions or easily stolen. We need to consider these materials. That's why we're talking about security and weather protection conditions. Materials like cement, reinforcement rod are susceptible to weather. So if, we, if the cement is exposed to air and water or moisture, it will lose its soundness. It will, it will its soundness value will reduce. So likewise, reinforce, uh, reinforce a reinforced steel or steel used for reinforcement, we need to consider not exposing them to uh, deterioration by by moisture or moist air. So moist air can also uh, affect the quality of the steel. So we also ensure that we ad uh, allocate adequate working space around storage areas. Then when we are also citing storage areas we need to cite them where it will be easy for the materials to be put into use or to be installed so avoid double transportation or movement of this material also known as double handling so we store these materials where it will be easy to pull them from the store or from their storage point to the point of usage without uh, um, incurring extra cost or extra amount so we look at the next factor. The next factor we want to look at is the accommodation considerations. Number and type of site staff anticipated. Calculate size and select unit of accommodation and check to ensure compliance with the minimum welfare requirements of the construction design and management regulations. Select siting for offices to give easy and quick access for visitors but at the same time giving a reasonable view of the site select siting for mess room and toilets to reduce working time to a minimum without impeding the general site circulation and or works in progress so we are considering here the number and the type of staff we are planning for or that we are expecting to uh, use on the site, uh, people that are going to work on the site. We also consider the size and the units of accommodation. So, while doing this, we need to have in mind that we comply with the minimum welfare requirement of the construction design and management regulations. Here, we also consider selecting the offices so that it will be easy to give uh, to have a quick access for visitors and also a quick uh, visitors can be able to access the offices without much stress then we are also talking about we select the convenience and the mess rooms we need to consider keeping this thing where or keeping them where it will be easy for workers or those on site to make use of them without having to uh, waste a lot of time assessing them so we need to consider these factors says select siting for mess room and toilets to reduce working time so we don't have to trek a kilometer before we can be able to assess convenience and monster points
Then another thing we have to consider is the fifth one, which is temporary services considerations. Based on the temporary services considerations, we are looking at what, when, and where are they required. Possibility of having permanent services installed at an early stage and making temporary connections for site use during the construction period. So we need to consider possibility of having, when we are planning for temporary services, we have to first of all consider possibility of having permanent services installed. So if we can install permanent services and then making connection for temporary ones or connecting them with temporary ones, then that would be the best idea. But where it is not possible or not feasible at the moment, then we we'll can start with temporary services. So based on this, these are the five methods we or factors we need to have in mind. We've mentioned the factors. We said the first one is the general consideration. The second one is the access. The third one is the storage considerations. And the fourth one is the accommodation considerations. While the fifth one is the temporary services considerations. So viewers, that is where we come to the end of the first lecture on site layout considerations.